I thank my member, my uh, friends who I've uh, been talking to, but I thank you for being here and covering this. Absolutely. This is a critical issue. We don't we don't willy nilly take upon us the notion of impeaching a member of the Biden cabinet. I mean, that's not that's that's not really what we would like to do. But I want to explain to you differently because you've heard you've heard all kinds of of the results of the policies of Secretary Mayorkas. But I want you to think about this for just a second. What you're seeing is the systemic systematic destruction of the geographical integrity of the United States of America. We don't control our southern border. It is controlled by the, the criminal drug cartels of Mexico. That is critical to understand why we must undertake this most serious of actions. So when Alexander Hamilton wrote in the 65th Federalist, and when James Madison, when he was recording the minutes of the original Constitutional Convention, they talked about what constitutes high crimes and misdemeanors and why we do that. We do it for a couple things. A public official who has abused and violated the public trust and constitutes a danger that we can't wait till the next election to remove them. This particular sec secretary started immediately emasculating the very, very strong policies of the previous administration. So, for instance, I want to give you a, a, a reference point. In 2020, the Yuma sector, for the entire fiscal year, encountered 9,000, fewer than 9,000, about 8,800 illegal aliens crossing. In last fiscal year, under the policies of Alejandro Mayorkas, more than 350,000, in fact, more than 360,000 encounters in the Yuma sector alone. If we were to take Yuma as the microcosm, you would see a community where the, the lone hospital that they have is having to try to figure out how they eat more than $25 million in costs from illegal aliens who've come into their community hospital. Every day, three or four women come into the maternity ward. 10 or 12 people somewhere in that neighborhood every day come into their emergency room. These are not people that have surrendered to the CBP and then are being taken there for treatment. No, these are people who have walked across the border to receive care at the hospital in Yuma. Well, what does that do? That impedes everybody else in the community from getting their getting their uh, uh, medical care taken care of. And it puts a strain on that hospital that is caused directly by Alejandro Mayorkas. So I told you I would give you additional reasons to think about this. But the top line is he's attacked the, the geographical integrity of the United States. And if you study history, you'll understand very clearly that when the dissolution of great nations begins to occur. One of the first things to go is your geographical integrity. Your boundaries, your borders are erased. And our borders have been erased by Secretary Mayorkas. And why do we know it's deliberate? I gave you the policies that he changed. We've talked about the numbers. I could give you various statements. Some of them have talked about these statements. The bottom line is this. Secretary Mayorkas, and I told them this to him directly, if he disagrees with, the, with President Biden on these policies, then he either must invoke different policies or resign. But if these are the, his policies that he finds accord with, then he must be impeached because he is a public official who has lost public trust and is an immediate imminent threat to the United States of America. In fact, he's beyond a threat. It's going to take a long, long time. If we stopped his policies today, it would take a long, long time to reverse the damage that he has done. And he's not stopping. He's invoking the new parole procedure. And he's giving people an app on their smartphone. If you've been down to the border, 
Love to y'all to come with me to a border trip sometime. I know many of these people up here have been with me down to the border. And I can tell you this, almost everybody coming across has a smartphone and now he's got an app for them. Let's pre-register. Because you know where the money that's going? Because they're gonna say, this administration is gonna tell you, we're putting all kinds of money down there. You know what that money's being used for? To quickly and more efficiently release these people into the United States of America. Parole's meant to be used for individual case-by-case -case basis, but he's doing mass paroles. And you know what he's gonna say to you? Because what's going to happen is now everybody's going to be going through the ports of entry and being given immediate parole. That's de facto amnesty. They're going to be able to work. They're going to be given legal status. And he's going to be telling you next month or the month after, he's going to say, hey, the encounters are down. You know why encounters will be down? Because people that typically come through the between the ports of entry are now going to be going through the ports of entry because they know they're going to be given de facto amnesty by, the, by this administration. Ladies and gentlemen, that is one more reason why the secretary has violated his oath of office. He's wreaking havoc on this country and he must be impeached. And with that, I thank my colleagues for joining me. Thank you for being here. And we will be proceeding with this impeachment as uh, swiftly as our as our uh, chairman will let us uh, hold these hearings, I'll take it. I'll take two questions. Uh, yeah. President Trump said, "I like acting," meaning he liked acting uh, secretaries of uh, Homeland Security, and he was able to push aggressive policy reforms because he had acting um, secretaries. Are you concerned that if this works, President Biden might do the <laughs> same thing? What I hope that this would do is that it would send a signal, to, not just to President Biden, but whoever comes in to fill this chair, that Congress cares and watches, the American people cares and watches, and you will be held accountable if you continue with this reckless, not just reckless, intentional, intentional attack on, on America's integrity of, of, uh, of our geography, of our, of our borders, and you have all that series of secondary and tertiary impacts that come from that kind of recklessness. And so that's, that's what I would hope would, hope would happen. We got one more? Yeah. Does Speaker McCarthy support this effort? Speaker McCarthy, um, two months before the election, he said he didn't think anybody needed to be impeached from the, from the uh, Biden administration. He has since changed his mind, and I'm hoping that he'll be fully on board. And uh, I'm confident when we present our case and we start this hopefully in the Judiciary Committee that uh, he would be on board. That, I'm hopeful of that. With that, thank you, everybody. Uh, no, no timeline. We have to, we have to work through the committees. Thank you. Thank you. All.